Hello friends, welcome to another Vicki Booten Design Team Project and today we are celebrating International Scrapbook Day. There's some challenges going on in the Facebook group at Vicki's Mixed Media Facebook community. And I'll list some of the challenge requirements or the recipes down below. There are some prizes she's giving away, so that's a great place to go for International Scrapbook Day. And what we were supposed to use is the kaleidoscope stencils. That's why I have the circle stencil down. And I'm using the iridescent texture paste, the glitter texture paste, and the art wedge. And Vicki Booten markers, the watercolor markers, are also on the recipe list and butterflies and three or more pattern papers. So you see that I already have my butterflies laid down on the layout. I have an idea that I want to, them to swoosh across the page. So I used the stamp and die cut set that came in the field notes, this butterfly set from Vicki. This is one of her past collections. So I used the die from the stamp and die set to cut that butterfly shape out of the post-it paper so that I could make a mask and only have the stencil paste go in the butterfly shape. So I'm using the watercolor markers to dye the glitter texture paste, the iridescent texture paste. And I love using this because it has such pretty, it has really large mica flakes, mica flakes and it's really pretty. So there's another one of the post-it paper masks I've created. This time I'm going to use the, these are kind of like pinwheel or umbrella looking stencil shapes, the circular stencil shapes. So I'm adding yellow to the top with the iridescent glitter texture paste. And now I'm adding juicy pear to the bottom so that it kind of goes from yellow to green. I think this is one of my favorite ones of the stencils that I and the masking that I technique that I used. And now I'll use the different size dots and another butterf butterfly mask. Since these are just paper, they don't hold up that well to the glitter paste, but that's okay. You can always just cut another one. So I'm mixing it with the sugared strawberry to create a light, a pink. And that'll be in the very top portion of the layout. Now I'm going back with the mask and I'm using a dauber from scrapbook.com and the color wheel pigment inks from Vicki Booten. So I'm going over where I created the glitter, the texture paste, and this was just gesso. So I'm going over that with the ink just to highlight that it's an actual butterfly shape. You can see it better when the ink is, is placed over it. And you can rub it off with a dry paper towel to bring back some of that iridescent shimmer. And if one of the butterflies you create, you're not really happy with it, like that one on the bottom right, I'm going to cut that out of the background paper. I'm working on the White Foundations Mixed Media Art Paper that's 140 pound by Vicki Putin. And I'm laying back all the butterflies back on the layout so that I can know where to put the colors because I want this next section of the mixed media watercolor to coordinate with each color of the butterflies. So I'm creating a watered down wash first and then splattering on. I'll heat this so that the strong water lines show up. And then you can go back and add some more intense color by adding less water. So I like starting with more water and then intensifying the color if I need to. And you can get a great blend if you work while the colors are still wet. So here you see I've done the purple and the blue. So it's plum pudding and blueberry pie. And I love that when you use these watercolor markers you get a strong water line. So I'm trying to coincide all of the colors with the colors of the butterflies. That way, I, that's why I keep putting the butterflies back on the page, even though I'm trying to move them around and take them off. I just want to make sure that I'm keeping the colors coordinated. And here I've added the teal. And if you add it over a section you've already dried, it will reactivate and kind of blend. I'm going to over the section that I previously masked and stenciled because I like the way that the watercolor markers work over and layer because they're tr translucent. So here's the watermelon burst. It's a darker green, like the outside of a watermelon. 
And this is what I really love is using the heat tool and creating those strong water lines. Like I said, it really gives some interest and some movement on the page. Now I'm going to move up to the yellow and I know that the yellow section is going to be where I house my photo and I'm going to highlight I have a yellow trench coat or raincoat on in the photo. So I'm kind of creating a larger yellow section. Now moving to very little orange and then more of the sugared strawberry and that coordinates with the glitter paste just above it. Adding more intense color with less water and then oops somehow there was a splotch of the plum pudding ended up on that bottom left and you see that I've cut out that area of the stenciling that I didn't like and I'll use it on a different project but if there is something on your background that you don't like you can always cut it out with a craft knife and back it with some pattern paper so I like that that gives another layer I'm gonna layer some of the black and white fussy cut butterflies from the Vicki Booten Color Kaleidoscope Collection. I'm going to layer black and white all throughout this just so that there's a, there's a lot of color so I want to balance that with the neutral black and white. The title is also going to be black and white and then the journaling. So there will be lots of neutral also on the page just so that it isn't overwhelming because there is a lot of color on here. All that white space gives your eye a place to rest and now I'm using the epoxy thickers from the color kaleidoscope collection and I'm trying to decide where I want to add in some embellishment and I need to start sticking things down so I'll probably use the express glue from sticky thumb and American crafts here I get the idea that I want to hand cut the title out of this leafy vine vine paper because it's a small print and it's black and white and if you are missing one of the stickers, you can use the backing of the stickers because that outline is there from the letter sticker. So I'm putting back the letter stickers. I just traced around them with a pencil. And now I'm going to hand cut, fussy cut those out, which is really simple to do with this large wide space font. I made them a little bit taller than the stickers, so I wanted to make sure that they were all kind of the same size. And that's really simple to do. I'll just erase the pencil lines. And now I get the idea that I want to add the iridescent texture paste to this title. Just to give it some bling and, a, and a, make it part of this artsy layout. I really haven't done a layout like this where it's really free form with a large title. And then my photo is actually going to be in the butterfly shape as well. So most of the shape on the layout is created with the butterflies. So I'm just going over this hand cut title with the iridescent texture paste and putting it on with the Vicky Booten palette knife. And you notice I'm doing this on a little piece of plastic, but you have to raise this up off of the plastic or it will like cement to the back. So I'm using some of those like, you know, those painter's triangles. I'm just creating little painter's triangles to lift these letters up off of the plastic backing and a clothespin, whatever you got, man. So I'm using that stuff so that, and I'll set that aside to dry. That'll take a little bit to dry while I cut out my photo. So I've printed the photo and used Photoshop to create two layers. One layer is the background layer that's color and the top layer is black and white so then I, when I erase the section where I am in the center of the wings it leaves the color and I really wanted to do that yay <laughs> the photos on there I'm like yay the photos on we're almost done we've almost made it to the end of the scrapbook layout for International Scrapbook Day and here the title is dry so I'm going to lay that down and add some sticky foam tabs, foam tabs from Sticky Thumb and American Crafts. I've, I think I have adhered all of the butterflies to the layout at this point. And you notice that I, I punched some small white butterflies and those were from the scraps of the white foundation paper. So those are really thick and I was able to cover that splotch where I made a mess with that plum uh, purple splash. So if you do have any splashes on the background that you don't like where they ended up, you can just cover it like I did with a, with a punched piece. 
I love how this title looks in real life. It was hard to capture on camera, but I do have some still shots in the end. And if you join our challenge and share in your, your creations in the Facebook group in Vicki's Mixed Media community on Facebook, I believe that's how you'll be entered to win the prizes. So I'm at, this is where I'm adding the epoxy hearts and I add a magenta one at the top and a green one here in the middle and a blue one I had already added on. So I have three hearts. I like to work in odd numbers. So here I'm just showing you that I pretty much have everything adhered down and all I have to do is add the journaling. We can add the journaling and we're almost done. So then I get the idea that I want to add some of these black and white words from the chipboard thicker pack from the color kaleidoscope collection. This one says goofball and the other one says you are. <laughs> and I believe the rest says magic memories or magical memories. So I like the black and white labels because they add some of the word and a linear aspect to this butterfly shape. The Lots of organic shapes that are going through the center of the layout kind of need something linear to juxtapose against. So that's why I really like adding these word strips in. And I'm just using the express glue from the sticky thumb glue from American Cross because that grabs in like five seconds. And that one says all day. So once I get these, and I'm using just an excess from the foam tab to wipe, wipe out the glue that seeped out the top. And here are my still shots. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a happy International Scrapbook Day and join us in the challenges. And I hope you win a prize. Thanks for joining me. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. Bye.